let's talk about Black and White 3. It's a chromogenic film, meaning it's a color film. It's processed as color. The results, if you scan it in color, you get like a duo tone, which Shane, you saw both versions. You saw the black and white version and the color version. It's ISO 3. It's fine grain. Generally speaking, it's it's inexpensive. It's 30 bucks a roll. So for 16 shooters, that's that's a, a pretty good deal. So what was your experience and uh, how did you feel about this particular stock? I liked it. I mean, I, I thought that the color scan was pretty trippy. I was like, whoa, this is crazy. If, if I had, you know, I think with each of these, but this one specifically, if I, you know, not knowing totally what it was going to look like, I might have shot different stuff with it. Right. This was also, this was like one of the very first roles I shot filming in that sort of a skiing environment where there was a lot of stuff happening at once. I'm still in the realm of like, is this camera even going to work? <laughs> this is like right. still really, really, like this was such a test role for so many reasons. I think the other thing for all of these roles in shooting skiing like this is like, I learned pretty quickly what kind of things work and what kind of things don't work when you're filming on a limited format where you only have two to three minutes. And if people are trying tricks that are very technical and hard, you're going to burn through a lot of film really fast and that's going to be a bummer. And so this role was, I walked away from this role, like with a bunch of like, Oh, these things work. This stuff probably doesn't work just in terms of like tricks you're trying to film. Right. right. Like, but yeah. It's, and I think in the middle of this role, the light changed and the sun went away. It was, you know, th this happened a bunch where it was like supposed to be this beautiful day in new England. And then suddenly an hour into the day it's overcast and I yeah. already have the role loaded. Uh, and I'm like, well, I, I'm committed to this. I'm just going to shoot it. So like halfway through this role, I think the shadows go away. The challenge I'm guessing for folks watching is, you know, you're not shooting a test chart. Like you're not doing a, you're, you're shooting a live event. Therefore you have so many things to contend with at once with so many unknowns. You don't know what the film's going to look like. You, I'm guessing you haven't shot this ISO before, ISO 3. And what did you use to meter? I use two different apps to meter on my phone. I use CineMeter. If I'm remembering correctly on this roll, I just like set it and forget it style. Like read once and was like, I'm just going to roll with it. Yeah, I just remember this roll being a huge lesson in this stuff's going to work. This stuff's not going to work for shooting this kind of skiing on 16. When you got the footage back, were you surprised in a good way or bad way? Like, what was your initial reaction to seeing it? I mean, I think I'm anytime I've gotten footage back from the K3 and it's been like, it, it exists, I get really excited <laughs> because the, the very first role I ever shot in the K3, I did about 10 things wrong loading the film and the film came back totally unusable. Like, the okay. film was slipping through the gate. So anytime it comes back and it's not that, it's, it's a totally a win. What I didn't know about shooting black and white that I wish I had known was how awesome the shadows look on mm -hmm. snow. I can see more on the Yeti later on when I'm shooting with a wider lens. You see these just incredible contrasty shadows of the skiers moving around. And I wish I had known just be aware of that more and like to frame that stuff in. You know, like when I'm shooting other ski projects, obviously digitally you're reviewing tricks like on the spot like hey does this look cool did you get the trick legit did i film it good or can we move on right like that's like the process and with this it's like i don't know i i saw your right. shape moving through the eyepiece like i think i yes. think it worked so yeah. like th that unknown is part of the fun but also like part of the frustration right so like there's stuff in here where it's like oh i was totally at the right spot but the person didn't get the trick the right way so i can't use this shot and that's can be heartbreaking right. especially when it's on film but this will change like there's footage in here where you know in a typical project i probably wouldn't use the attempts of a trick and some of these roles like i totally will because i like the way the attempts look i don't know it, it'll it changed everything and like just the normal process of making a ski video like this